meeting to order. Uh, welcome to the Cape Elizabeth Town Council regular monthly meeting of May 11th, 2009. I would ask the clerk pro tem slash town manager to please read the roll call. Thank you, Jim. Chairman Rowe? Here. Councillor Backer? Here. Councillor Jordan? Here. Councillor Lennon? Here. Councillor McKinney? Here. Councillor Sherman? Here. Councillor Swift Kayata? Here. But in, in the town clerk is busy preparing for the election tomorrow. Uh, why she's not here. We had about 500 absentees that uh, need to be processed this evening. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Please rise and join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Town Council reports and correspondence. Anne? Um, thank you. I uh, have two things to report. One is that uh, we had the final meeting of the Communications Committee uh, subcommittee this afternoon, and we will be, uh, that's the committee that has to do with the town website, cable TV policies, and so on and so forth. We will be providing a report uh, to uh, the rest of the Council. Um, um, there will be two items coming before the council at the June council meeting. So, and then secondly, I just wanted to report that uh, from last Friday until I'm sorry, last Wednesday until yesterday, I was at the National League of Cities meeting in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. It was a meeting on uh, risk management training program, and it was really excellent to get together with municipal officials from all over the country. It was very productive. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Other reports and correspondence from the councillors? Um, I have mentioned uh, several times over the past couple of years uh, that our town's youth sports programs as well as our school uh, athletic programs have embarked upon a program called Sports Done Right, which is sponsored by the University of Maine. Uh, the, this initiative was to establish a culture in town uh, in which sportsmanship, uh, opportunity, education, health, personal development, and fun can all become uh, on an equal level with wins and championships. Uh, following a rather rigorous and candid self-assessment process and a goal-setting process, uh, I'm very pleased to report that the Sports Done Right uh, visitation team, which came to town this past week, is recommending that Cape Elizabeth become certified as a Sports Done Right community. Uh, school board member Karen Burke deserves much of the credit. Uh, she was the leadership glue, if you will, that held this process together uh, during a time of transition in administration in both uh, the community services and our high school athletic department. So uh, we look forward to great things there. This is the first step, and uh, I think already, whether coincidence or not, our high school boys varsity basketball team won the good sportsmanship for the first time in my memory uh, this past year, which I think is really uh, something. Any other reports, correspondence, um, town manager's report? Yes, uh, thank you, Jim. Just wanted to mention that one of the stories on our town website is a follow through in the municipal budget process, and in, uh, specifically, it relates to street lights. And the chief of police has been working to implement the new street lighting policy that was adopted. And there's a list of about 100 street lights on the website that are due to be uh, turned out. Uh, I encourage everyone to look at the list and if they have any concerns to uh, let the chief of police know. But uh, this is in keeping with trying to have more energy conservation as well as savings uh, of uh, street lighting costs. So I encourage everyone, everyone to look at that list because my sense is when the lights are removed, uh, we'll be hearing uh, a few comments at that time. So. Uh, better to hear them earlier rather than later. So, thank you. Thank you, Mike. A review of the minutes of the meeting held on a special meeting on uh, April 30th, 2009. Do I have a motion? Dave? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to approve. Uh, the minutes. Discussion on the motion? Any errors, omissions? Seeing none, all in favor? Votes unanimous. Thank you. 
Uh, this evening, we will be hold, uh, the first item on our agenda is a public hearing uh, regarding the proposed zoning amendments for the BA zone in town. Uh, I'd first like to uh, allow uh, Ordinance Committee Chair uh, Sarah Lennon to uh, provide some opening comments. Excuse Sarah? me. Excuse Thank me. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry to interrupt. Did we have the citizen opportunity for discussion I'm sorry. Of items? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt, but there okay. might be somebody here. I would now offer citizens the opportunity for discussion on items that are not on tonight's agenda. Seeing none, I will give the floor to Councillor Lennon. Um, just very briefly, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Um, it's great to see everyone here. I know all the councillors are eager to hear everybody's opinion on all sides of this issue and indeed many issues. I know there's been a lot of focus on the um, 553 property and the abutting 551 and I suspect um, that most people are here to speak about that but there's many many other things in the ordinance package as well. Um, some changes in wetlands, um, some issues about um, restaurants and when they should, hours that they can remain open, um, many design standards for uh, up upgrade in the BA um, zoning and um, setbacks, property lines, um, uh, allowed uses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's a thick packet we have before us, and it's my hope that, that given the history of this particular ordinance, which has been through a lot of subcommittees for a lot of time. Um, it was in the planning board, I believe, for over a year, and they had several public hearings, and they deliberated at length. And then they passed it on to us in the Ordinance Committee, and we ha held seven meetings and, again, deliberated at length and tweaked some of the things that the planning board had given us and tried to come up with compromises on several of these more contentious issues. So it's my profound hope that um, all sides can be respectful and we can remain open-minded and listen to one another and with any luck come up with a compromise that feels palatable for everyone. So with that, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, I'd just like to run down through the rules for those of you who may not have spoken at a public hearing before. We do have uh, some rules that we'd like to uh, enforce. We ask that you speak only to the topic uh, of the hearing, which in this case is the, B uh, the proposed BA zone amendments. Uh, we ask you to use the lectern uh, to my left at the front of the uh, hall. Uh, we ask that you please give your name and address. We ask that you limit comments to three minutes. We ask that everyone respect the decorum of the meeting and the proceedings. Uh, no personal attacks will be tolerated. Those wishing to speak, uh, we ask that they queue up two or three deep at the lectern so that we can move the process along fairly quickly. And finally, we ask that the audience refrain from overt displays of pleasure or displeasure, uh, as these may be intimidating to those who may hold a differing view. So without further ado, I would declare this public hearing open. You may come to the lectern if you would wish to speak. Good evening. My name is Lynn Beal. I live at One Crescent Road. Cape Elizabeth. I'm one, road, one street removed uh, in back of Irving Gas Station, for those of you who don't know where it is. Um, I have to say I was very pleased when I saw that 553 had been refurbished in the manner it had. It really added and enhanced that whole area, and I um, was very, very pleased to see that being done. Um, but let me just let, let you know what I'm speaking about tonight in terms of my support in terms of that being um, coded for business. My understanding is, having done a little bit of research, there are no, uh, currently there are no restrictions on um, residences that, have, that can uh, dictate to how many people can live in one residency. Um, and that's under one lease. Now, there are no restrictions on how many cars can be in any one given property. Uh, how many can fit into a driveway, etc. cetera. Um, there's no hours of operation in a, in a private residency. And as you know, parties can go on and so on and so forth. Um, a residential tenant can have a business 
there, safe a daycare, though it needed it needs to be go through code enforcement, but they can in fact run a business there. Um, <clears throat> and it can even have a B and B if they so choose. They could rent out rooms with certain code enforcement restrictions. And and my understanding is that in terms of keeping this place looking as nice as it is um, and what it does for the neighborhood, that long term, I don't think it's going to be realistically an option for the owners to keep it if it it's, does not bring in some money. So I'm here to say I support the code, uh, the, certainly the recoding of it, and um, I hope you would give that consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Good evening. Joseph Foley, 511 Ocean House. Um, <clears throat> I've written to you all, and I just would like to take a few minutes just to highlight a few things. Firstly, I'd like to thank the members of the Ordinance Committee, Councilors Lennon, Backer, and Sherman, for their very deliberate and thoughtful review of the proposed amendments. I attended all of their meetings, and I came away with a feeling that they were very sensitive to the concerns of all the residents of our town. I strongly believe that the respect and the integrity of the adjacent residential neighborhoods must be maintained. I am very much in favor of the wording that Councilor Backer requested be included in the purpose statement in this regard. I am also in favor of the changes in the performance standards that pertain to the establishments within 100 feet of a residential district that they shall not be open to customers between the hours of 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. No seating, service, or other organized gathering shall be allowed outside after 6 p.m. and no alcohol shall be served outside at any time. Please be mindful that the adjacent residential neighbors will be living with the results of your votes for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Straw. I'm at 557 Shore Road. And I want to talk about the Business District A uh, proposed amendments. Um, I'd like to begin by saying I think the design portions of the amendments are very well thought out, and I'm greatly in support of them. Um, although I think the problem here is that the devil is in the details. Uh, I'm going to start by just addressing some minor drafting errors that exist in the proposed amendments. Uh, section D, subsection D, uh, you use a number of non-restrictive clauses where the intent was a restrictive clause. And you use which where that should have been used. So what you're doing is you're actually making some changes that aren't intended. Same with subsection F of section D, you use a which uh, where that should be used as it's written all structures existing as of April 1st, 2008 are non-conforming structures, so you should address that. Uh, finally, subsection 3, as drafted, uh, requires site plan review for all developments. Again, a which is used where that should have been used. And then an or is used shortly thereafter, or an and, I believe, was intended. So I would ask you to address all of those before actually deciding one way or the other on this proposal. Um, my substantive con concerns are the fact that the purpose is that this is supposed to be a pedestrian-friendly area, um, but you're moving gas stations and repair facilities from conditional uses to primary uses. That's going to allow any of the properties on Shore Road to turn into gas stations with very little input from the community and very little oversight from the planning board. I don't think that is necessarily what was intended, but my reading of the statute would allow that. I don't think that gas stations or repair facilities should fall into that category and should be moved back into conditional uses so that we still have some input onto this topic, um, especially given the fact that it's directly contradictory to the stated purpose of the area, which is pedestrian walking and serving the local community. Uh, finally, um, <coughs> metalworking is now going to be allowed on Shore Road. There's no definition of metalworking in the ordinance, as near as I can tell. Because there's no definition, it leaves it open to interpretation in the future. Technically, a metal shop could open up as long as it's under 300 square feet in size. I don't think anyone wants a metal shop there, but it is going to be allowed potentially under this ordinance change. That needs to be addressed. Metal working needs to be defined. And uh, finally, the setbacks uh, are shrinking. The changing from 25 to 5 feet between business parcels makes sense. But I think uh, between the residential and the business, those uh, decreasing them doesn't make as much sense, especially given the fact that the buffer zone has been removed. And I think that if you do 
reduce the setback, at least keep the buffer zone in between the residential properties and the business properties. And then, um, oh, and there's the drafting error in subsection F would actually allow all existing structures to expand up to 5,000 square feet, potentially, irrespective of whether it was actually intended. I don't see, I believe this is a drafting error. I don't understand what the purpose would be. So I'd ask that you look at that as well. Thank you. Uh, Chris, could, could you please provide, uh, at some point, could you please provide us with the, the wording changes that you proposed? Yes. Just so we could look. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jacqueline Cottrell, and I'm on 8 Wellback Way. When I first moved to Cape Elizabeth in 2004, I would often travel to the cookie jar and on several occasions had noticed the house across the street at 553 Shore Road. It was an older home, obviously neglected and approaching complete disrepair. With thriving businesses surrounding the house, I have to say it was, it was a bit of an eyesore as you entered Cape Elizabeth. With hope of someday making the house economically viable, Lee and her mother purchased it and with considerable expense began to restore it to its former glory. It now stands out as a beautiful house as you drive by, but unfortunately the businesses surrounding the house are not what they were even a few years ago. Could you imagine how the area would look today with the cookie jar boarded up in 553, uninhabitable, across the street? Not a great look for increasing property values in the neighborhood. What will happen to 553 Shore Road if we do not zone it as a business district and once again it goes up for sale? It is a very large house that needs considerable upkeep and could quickly revert back to a neglected house or remain vacant like the cookie jar. I also want to mention that I live in a neighborhood with a daycare center right next door. A few years ago, the Funny Farm applied to increase enrollment. I, too, was concerned what impact a big, a big daycare center would have on the neighborhood. Lots of cars, coming and going, the noise, etc. I can tell you my concerns were unfounded and I do not even notice this activity. If the opposition truly thinks a few cars parked in the driveway are going to change the neighborhood, then I'm telling you, I'm telling you your concerns are unfounded as well. I ask, to please, I ask for you to please consider Lee Wilson's request to zone 553 Shore Road as part of the business district. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Julie Barnes, 84 Ocean House Road. My husband and I are the leases and proprietors of Rudy's of the Cape. I'd like to thank you to the council and community members who have taken the time to visit Rudy's recently in an attempt to better understand some of the amendments put forth tonight regarding the BA zone. My husband and I commend the Ordinance Committee for the thoughtful proposal before you tonight. It is clear that the spirit of the ordinance is to promote good citizenship and neighborly relations amongst Cape businesses and homeowners, something we are wholeheartedly in support of. That said, I would ask the council to re reconsider two points among the amendments. The first being the option for a restaurant to serve until 10 p.m. And the second being the elimination of the provision for no more than eight seats at a counter. I specifically request these. We have had um, two occasions to date where we normally are fine uh, closing the business at 9 p.m. Uh, we, we've had two occasions where there was a ball game on and people specifically came in to have dinner and watch the game. Um, and unfortunately, we had to um, tell them they had to leave in the middle of the game. Um, and opening till 10 would allow us that flexibility just under those circumstances. We have no interest in remaining open beyond that. Um, the eight seat at a counter provision is perplexing to us. Um, I'm assuming the, the, the originality of that had to do with eight seats at a bar where alcohol is served. Um, but those of you who have been in recognize the fact that there are eight seats at the counter where food is served, which I would say are um, a hot spot for families of young children who love the, the twirly stools. Um, and so it's not unusual on a Friday night for one family to occupy the eight seats at the counter to enjoy their burger or sandwich um, that doesn't impact in any way the, the seven or eight seats that are actually at the bar. Um, so I thank you for your consideration on those two points. Thank you, Julie. Hi, I'm Mary Page. And I own Rudy's of the Cape, 517 Ocean House Road, Cape Elizabeth. 
the wetland setback request started in 2003 as an ordinance change, and that in turn was rolled into the comprehensive plan in 2005, which was then thrown into the BA zone changes in 2007. The one stipulation regarding any of this was that the BA zone hooked to city sewer, which we did. We hooked to city sewer in 2007 at an, as a substantial cost of $10,000. And this change only affects Rudy's and Jordan's. I know that there's some place over by the cookie jar that it might affect. I'm not sure which one that is. Um, we were told that the only way that our business could change was that we had a site plan review in place by Maureen and Bruce. For countless years, we were told this. In 2007, we hired Pat Carroll of Carroll & Associates. We had our site plan review. And it is, again, a substantial cost of $15,000. He worked with Maureen and what he wanted and what was to be done and how it was to be done. It was dictated. With the expanded hours, the outdoor seating, the expansion plans, everything in place. When we submitted it to the planning board in 2007, it was rejected because the BA wetland zone ordinance was not changed yet. That wasn't in place. So in February of 2008, I came before the town council, which was, it was given to you for you to fast track it. And Michael, you also helped me with that to say, we need to have this taken care of. It does reflect on the two businesses in town. It was a year and a half ago. We submitted the changes. We wanted it to be in place for the summer of 2008. Now we're coming into 2009. We met the stipulations. We met the criteria. We, the BA wetland setback needs to be implemented. And as for the BA zone changes, from the February 27th, 2009 forecaster, and I quote, Special rules have been placed on some uses on lots within, 10, 000, within 100 feet of residential property and on sm lots smaller than 10,000 square feet. Only three properties in the BA zone are smaller than 10,000 square feet. Kettle Cove Dairy, the fire station on Shore Road, and 553 Shore Road. No buildings in the Shore Road zone could be farther than 100 feet from a residential property. Some committee members said that the lot size restrictions invoke spot zoning a method on the rezoning one property at a time, which is not legal in town, but agreed that it was the most convenient way to restrict something like a loud late night restaurant from being opened at 553 Shore Road. Under the zoning changes approved by the committee, restaurants on smaller lots of 10,000 square feet must close by five and so on. These changes would allow businesses as usual to continue at the good table on Route 77 and prevent Rudy's from serving alcohol outside under these restrictions. These restrictions were not even issued when we had been dictated what our site plan review was and when it was submitted. This is spot zoning, and apparently it's not legal. And they really need to be, oh, excuse me, they need to be rewritten, and maybe with the help of the business owners, we could accomplish that. Because again, this only restricts Rudy's and Jordan's. Thank you. Mary. Excuse me, could you increase the volume? Uh, it's difficult to hear that here. I can't. Maybe they can from the Karen. control room. <laughs> yeah, it also, underneath that, that, could you turn up the volume in the hall a little bit? Yeah. Good. The also, the seats in the front, under that overhang, it tends to absorb the noise and you can't hear anything. But those of you underneath that overhang, I don't think you hear too much. Thanks, Karen. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Monahan. Um, I'm a small business owner and also an owner of one of the properties very close to 553 Shore Road. Um, I'm here for three points. I, I want to um, express um, the highest and best use thought process, the impact of 553 that we have on the neighborhood, and also um, to be a, a, a small business owner, encouraging small business owners to be able to do business here in Cape Elizabeth. Um, first of all, the highest and best use. I was a member of the zoning board for a number of years here, and I know how important that is um, when you look at properties and having the highest and best use. 
when you look at the location of this particular property, it is surrounded by business influences. And if you take the beauty of that home and you put it into a residential, back to the residential type of idea, it really isn't appropriately to be used as a residential at this, at this point in time because you've got the cookie jar across the street. Hopefully that will open up soon. Um, you've got a place for people to fix cars, and you've got the, of course you've got the pub public safety right there, social uh, and mental health building next door, an apartment building, and the building that I own, five, um, uh, 537 Shore Road, the Cape Shore Day Spa. Um, I just think you, uh, if we are just simplistic in thinking about what type of impact this particular property and the use that they want to have on fi with 553, it's, um, it's a no-brainer. Um, it's, it's the highest and best use of that property is to have a small business and possibly an antique shop in there. Um, second of all, uh, the impact. And oftentimes with impact, people think cars and people and uh, interruption of neighbor neighborhoods. And I can tell you right now that my property, 537 Shore Road, would be very, very similar to the type of property that they are suggesting that they would like to have. A, a Cape Shore Day Spa is a hair salon and spa. And their hours of business is about 10 to 7, six days a week. I think this is similar to what they're looking for. On average, you see in the parking lot, and we do have parking there, um, you see maybe five cars in that parking lot, and maybe one additional one in the carport for the owner. That's not huge. Uh, so the coming and going of traffic for this type of a service industry is, is small. Um, it's not going to cause car accidents or you know, people to get all confused of coming and goings of cars and all. And also, outside of the business time is uh, our, our residential people, well, of course, you know, they, get, they take off in the, in the morning and they come back in the evening. Very, very low. And if I think about the neighbors that we have, um, it would be almost a mirror image of what, um, of what they have. Um, because right behind my building are, is that same neighborhood. And we don't have any, um, we don't have a fence or anything like that. We have trees. And we see the neighbors coming back and forth through our parking lot to get to wherever they want to go with no problem. Um, there isn't any sound problem. We, we have never, since 1996, since we've owned it, we've never had our neighbors. Does that um, ask you to wind up, please? Yes. Lastly, I just think that we need to encourage businesses in Cape Elizabeth. I think too many times we shut down opportunities, and we have a great community here, and I think this property and the use that they're suggesting would be uh, just in addition to the area. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Uh, good evening. I'm Peggy McGeehy uh, with Perkins Thompson, and um, I've been asked by uh, uh, Mr. Sanford and uh, Ms. Wilson Sanford and also uh, by uh, Ms. Waning Nicholas uh, to uh, speak to some of the legal issues and some of the factual issues um, in the two issues, only I'm going to confine my comments to the one that's before you right now. Given that there's been a lot of confusion, I know that they've been working hard to be collaborative and appreciate the time that the counselors have provided and the care, uh, but this just seems to be a piece that they wanted to address. Uh, in looking at the, uh, the changes in the zone, what you have right now is a little tiny zone, and it's surrounded by homes. And it is a neighborhood zone right now. What your standards, that you're, uh, the changes you're considering are going to reduce the protections they have. Just as a prior speaker said, now there will be an opportunity for, uh, as a permitted use, uh, repair garages, uh, gas stations with four bays, an 80-seat restaurant, uh, Daycare centers, there are things that, um, uh, that were, were not uh, permitted uses that would be made permitted, permitted uses. But beyond that, buffers, the buffer is eliminated. The setback of 50 feet is now 20 feet. Of 25 feet is now 5 feet. Parking is allowed. The impacts are extraordinary. Uh, 
I think, believe you have information in your packet about other restaurants in Cape Elizabeth have a, the proportion of their alcohol sales be about 15% or 17%. This one allows 25% of the sales to be alcohol. And it also allows outdoor uses. So these impacts in this very small neighborhood, with all these residents around here, there are going to be extreme. They will undermine the neighborhood uh, quality. And why is that important from a legal perspective? That's because you have provisions in your comprehensive plan with which your ordinance should be consistent. And uh, I'm going to just uh, read a couple of those provisions uh, for you. Um, the plan calls for the North Shore uh, Residential District to be preserved. And it says that this area, quote, includes m most of the oldest neighborhoods in Cape Elizabeth. And, quote, the lots are tightly clustered and reflect densities common during the early 1900s. And it's zoned for the densest residential development. Now, of course, commercial being right next door is going to be a much more intense impact. So the plan actually calls for more instead of less protections. It says that the town shall add land use regulation options that preserve community character and preserve the compact neighborhoods along Shore Road. As we mentioned, what's being proposed to you is the opposite. Uh, the uh, comprehensive vault plan uh, does go into uh, no significant expansion of the business area. We can talk about that when you bring that issue uh, forward. But the bottom line is the integrity and the uh, preservation of this neighborhood is paramount in the comprehensive plan. Your zone is fine. It's not pressing its boundaries with use. The cookie jar needs to be sold. I mean, you, so it's not a need that um, is compelling so that would justify uh, these kinds of uh, extreme ex uh, exposure and vulnerability uh, for the residents. Thank you. For Thank you, Peggy. Good evening. My name is Laura Lynch. I live at 880 Shore Road, which is right down the road from 553 Shore Road, and I just wanted to say that I am in support of the zoning change. I think it would be a good addition since there's other businesses um, in the neighborhood. And I think it's also important for Cape Elizabeth to support, um, as a community, local businesses. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Hi, my name is Ann Bosworth, and I live at Old Fort Road, about a mile down the street. I've also lived on Cottage Farms Road, which is right around the corner from 553 Shore Road. And I just, my husband and I wanted to um, show our support for the rezone. We're hoping that you'll be flexible with it, and we, you know, are excited that that business zone could potentially sort of be what it is now, a thriving business where the, you see people walking around there and the kids riding their bikes to and from the local businesses. And it's nice to see. It's a nice entryway coming into Cape Elizabeth. Um, and we are fully in support of it. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. I'm Nancy Whiting, CS 17 Linwood Street. And I'm going to speak on two issues. The first one is the B&B on Shore Road. I know many lovely towns that have B&Bs right in the middle of their neighborhoods. Camden comes to mind as one. I think it would be very nice to have a b and in Cape Elizabeth, and I do support that idea. I would only question that you take a look at the parking situation. I know that house very well, and uh, <clears throat> I would be a little concerned about the parking there. The other issue that I want to mention is uh, Rudy's Restaurant. I very much uh, love Rudy's. I go there very often, and I want to support whatever they're asking for. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy. Good evening. My name is Gail Schmader. I live at 511 Ocean House Road. Um, 
I want to extend thanks to the members of the Ordinance Committee for doing such a comprehensive review and draft of the BA amendments, proposed amendments. I attended most of those meetings. Their work was deliberate and thoughtful as they balanced the concerns of businesses in abutting residential neighborhoods. They worked hard to reach a fair compromise for both districts. I support their work. Thank you. I especially support two of their proposals. First, the addition of the words, the BA zone protects the integrity of the adjacent residential neighborhood. It's important to me to maintain the integrity of the neighborhood. We are a multi-generational, family-oriented neighborhood. Most of us work five to six days a week, go to bed early, and spend our free time enjoying our family and friends and taking care of our properties. Second, I support the establishment of a 100-foot buffer zone um, with restrictions if the business property and or parking lot is located next to a residential district. I feel strongly this helps to maintain the integrity of the neighborhood. Um, Closing between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. makes certain the noise from patrons and cars leaving an establishment is curtailed at a reasonable hour for the abutting neighborhood. Also, if an establishment holds a liquor license, allowing no alcohol to be served outside and limiting the hours of outside service of food to 6 p.m. is respectful of neighbors' windows and doors that may be open and of the time that neighbors may be outside relaxing with their families. It's very important to me that our neighbors, especially our children, not witness alcohol consumption outside. Please continue the work of upholding the integrity of our residential neighborhoods in the abutting BA zone. And thank you very much for your service and commitment to Cape Elizabeth. Thank you, Gail. Good evening. My name is Fern Orr, and Jack and I have lived at 505 Ocean House Road since 1957. You'll have to bear with me because I have an allergy and I'm finding it difficult to talk. But I do want to ditto everything Gail has just said. Thank you. Fern. Good evening. My name is Stephen Pop. I reside on Woodland Road in Cape Elizabeth. I'd like to address several topics this evening, one being Rudy's. Um, <clears throat> I'm in support of Rudy's food. Man of my girth will tell you it's a very good place. The people seem really, really nice there. However, I don't live close enough that I feel, and I'm not about to, to speak appropriately on any changes that they need. I would like to address, however, and oppose the uh, changes to the zoning of 553 Shore Road. This is not about fulfilling a dream um, of opening a pottery shop or a quilt shop or you know, lifelong business dream. Basically, that would be handled under our home occupation or our home business clause. That's easy, a couple hundred dollars, two by two foot sign. Nobody can stop that, not even the highest court in the land. Um, highest and best use isn't at issue because the property was purchased at a low, low price. Um, it was purchased at a very, very low price, and the parties that did purchase it were well aware and familiar with the town, and they purchased it. Basically, they, they know that they purchased it as a residence and not as a commercial property. Um, <clears throat> we've had enough bailouts in this country for people, you know, when it comes to, oh, geez, now I can't make it. But basically, I did pay a visit to Augusta, and I found Augusta very, very nice. The governor kept inviting me up after I hosted him several times at the Maine Military Museum uh, with Lee Humiston. So I was instructed to do this uh, by some friends up there. Uh, to whom it may concern, as instructed, this led us to serve as a legal notice and this statement is to serve as a legal notice to any and all elected or appointed town officials of the town of Cape Elizabeth, Maine. I, along with other citizens of Cape Elizabeth, have great concerns regarding the already dangerous traffic situation on Shore Road, on the Shore Road area between Woodland and Charles Roads. This is a major question as there is a major question as to the zoning status of 551 Shore Road. Recent public statements by the town manager and zoning officials leave the legal clarification and active status of 551 Shore Road unclear. This questionable mapping error, along with the long-standing efforts of the owners of 553 Shore Road to change zoning from residential to commercial status, could create even more commercial business than discussed at previously held public meetings. That's critical. Uh, Percentage-wise, this could be, no doubt, the largest increase of commercial business and traffic in Cape Elizabeth's history, if you check it percentage-wise. 
A major traffic study should have been done long before 553 Shore Road made application to even rezone. It just should have been done, period. Local residents who are very familiar with this strip of road find it awful harrowing to navigate the, this sidewalk-free area proposes a history, possesses a history of accidents, near accidents, speeding, and other safety issues. The issue the issues, status, and wishes of the owners of 551 and 553 Shore Road no longer have any bearing with regard to the actions you must take. Safety is the paramount issue. A rush to vote or a change of any kind cannot take place until there is a new, full, professional, comprehensive traffic study and public hearing. The job of a town official is to protect the safety of and well-being of all of its citizens, not the financial interests of a few. In closing, after being notified of public safety concerns, you must take immediate action to protect all parties involved. Please let me remind you that in the future, if a major accident occurs causing injury or fatality, the town and you personally may not be protected from litigation or personal loss. Thank you. Thank you, people. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Kathy Johnson, and I live at 12 Arrow Point Road in the Oakhurst section, not too far away from 551. Um, I would like to speak in favor of Lee Wilson's request to turn her property on Shore Road into a retail shop. As many of you know, for nine years, I owned Presence of Heart right down the street, uh, another yellow house just a few hundred yards uh, down just across the line in South Portland. And I know many of the neighbors here who were customers of mine, and we enjoyed a wonderful time uh, as retailers in that area. Uh, and even though it's been three years since I closed my shop, I still every day have people say, I miss your shop. You are a valued asset and something that we really needed and valued in our community. Um, before I opened my shop, I often thought what a perfect building the beautiful yellow house across the street from the cookie jar would make as a retail space. Had it been for sale at the time, I would have pursued the same path that Lee is pursuing now. It's kind of ironic, but I always looked at that space and I said, oh my God, that would be such a gorgeous shop. Um, I want to assure those who have concerns that gift shops make wonderful neighbors. You can ask all the people who abutted my space uh, at 463 Cottage Road. The hours are basically 10 to 5. The customers are friends and neighbors who enjoy pretty things and will appreciate the attention to detail that Lee will bring to the gardens, her merchandise, and the building itself. Shops like mine and the sh kind of shop that Lee wants to open are the backbones of what makes small towns special. They're a great place to greet friends, to discuss last week's school board meeting, and a great place to find a unique gift. The small businesses are closing everywhere in this country. And to me, someone who has the vision and the fortitude and wants to actually do this, I take my hats off, hat off to Lee. Uh, the space on Shore Road offers a perfect little retail oasis for those of us who live on this side of Cape Elizabeth. While we still hold out hope that the cookie jar will reopen as the cornerstone of this retail area, Lee's shop will be a wonderful addition to this quaint stretch of Shore Road. In this time when so many small businesses are struggling, I applaud Lee and her vision to turn this beautiful building into a shop that we can all enjoy. Lee's excellent sense of style and beauty will be a huge asset to the area. Please give us all the opportunity to enjoy her shop. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. My name is uh, David Stanford. I live at One Charlesville. Uh, I have two points that I'd like to make. The first is this. There are clear differences between what is permissible in a business district and what is permissible in a residential district. In a business district, you don't stand outside and complain to a restaurant that you don't like the odors that are being vented out through the kitchen. In a business district, you don't complain to a retail shop that there's too many cars coming and going, too many people there. In an, a carpentry shop or a furniture shop, you don't get to stand outside, outside 
and complain that you don't like the noise of the power saws. In all those instances, that kind of behavior is what is expected in a commercial district. And the three, and as you probably know, the three examples that I use are directly drawn, drawn from what is being, from the package that's being submitted as allowable uses for this district. Okay, fine. Then we come to 553 Shore Road. It is now a residential property, and it is a Lee Wilson request that it be changed to a business property. The difficulty to me is relatively simple. That huge structure is embedded in a residential area. I sent all of you yesterday four photographs that I took the same day that show that there is incredibly little space between 553 Shore Road and Jane Wayne Nicholas's property at 551 Shore Road on one side and our property at 1 Charles Road on the other side. There is not even 15 feet between the property boundary at our lilac bushes and the back of 553 Shore Road. You couldn't even get a dumpster into that property if you wanted to use it as a restaurant. The cost to the residents of the area is simply too great to allow it. It just is. It's not personal about businesses. It's not about Lee Wilson. It's about this being an utterly inappropriate structure, inappropriate property to be used as a business. The cost to us, all the abutters are opposed to it. The abutter on the north is opposed to it. The abutter on the south is opposed to it. The Freemans, who aren't direct abutters but live very close to that property, a few feet from our house, are also opposed to it. The neighborhood is opposed to it. And we have collected 46 or 48 signatures from people from the neighborhood who are opposed to that rezoning. That's my first issue. The other one will, can be very quick. The fact is that once that property is rezoned business, it is a business zoned property. If for whatever reason Lee Wilson chooses to sell it, then the fact that she wants to run it as a small retail shop is completely irrelevant. It is a business property, which can become an auto repair shop, it can be a veterinary shop, it can be all sorts of permissible uses and those of us who live near that are expected to endure, in addition to the difficulties that come from it being a business property, we have to endure the fact that it could be resold. I have to ask you to please wrap it up, David, please. Wrapping it up. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My name is Emily Matterson, and I live at 2 Charles Road, directly across the street from David, within view of 553 Shore Road, as they are also on their view also. Um, David's right. Penny Jordan and I walked the property the other day, and I said, Lee wants to rent the third floor as um, an apartment, although she says nobody would live in that place. She's still going to rent the third floor as an apartment. I think that might have to have a fire escape. I'm not sure about that. But if it did need a fire escape, there's absolutely no place for it to go. The back of the house is so close to David's property, and there's sort of a little, I think it's a bulkhead, into the cellar. Um, there would be no, I don't, I'm not actually sure if a fire escape would be required. I thought that they were for any people that lived on third floors, and I do see them around, but I'm not actually sure. I did call the fire chief, but he hasn't returned my call. In the um, zoning ordinances, it says the planning board must find that the proposal will be compatible with the surrounding neighborhood and have no adverse effect on the value of adjacent properties. This would definitely have an effect on the value of our properties. How could it not have? The people that are speaking in favor of this, none of them live in the neighborhood. None of them are within sight of this building. I would like this building, too. I did used to visit Cassie's shop a lot. I liked it very much. I used to go to her home when she had the sales in her home. Uh, I would go to Lee's house 
it, if it were someplace else. I don't want it in my neighborhood. None of us want it in our neighborhood. Nobody would want this in their neighborhood. None of you. And none of the speakers here tonight would want it if it were in their neighborhood. And I think that it's um, too bad, actually, that we have to really come back and fight this continuously. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. <coughs> Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Carl Best. I live at 12 Pine View Road, Cape Elizabeth. My property abuts the uh, PA zone on uh, Ocean House Road. Um, I, I've expressed my thoughts and gratitudes for your your efforts uh, on this topic uh, in an email, and thank you for responding. But I did just want to highlight a couple things and emphasize uh, my full support for uh, the language contained in the uh, sections involving the purpose, the performance standards, and particularly the uh, design requirements that you put forth. Uh, I, I would just say that, um, you know, speaking for myself, uh, unfortunately, I, I feel that our neighborhood uh, has uh, already been compromised um, to, to quite an extent. And I, for one, would not be in favor of uh, compromising any of these uh, amendments as they've been put forth today, um, particularly those that relate to the 100-foot buffer to the critical wetlands areas, uh, extended hours for businesses and residential areas, as well as uh, outdoor seating. Uh, I would ask, uh, and I know it's a difficult thing to strike a balance between residential privacy and, uh, and the ability for us as residents to have these businesses close at hand and take advantage of that. But, um, you know, I would just ask that you be mindful that uh, these are residential areas first and foremost, and I hope that they remain. Thanks. Thank you, Carl. A request, uh, if everybody could speak just a little bit louder. Sometimes the, the low voices are difficult to hear. Uh, Eric Hansen, um, I live at 7 Cragmore, which is right around the corner from uh, the Shore Road property, 553. I, I, rather than repeat what everyone else has said, uh, supporting Lee's uh, 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 asking for an extension of BA zone, I, I, I will add, I, I ran by the property today and looked at the similar property. I developed a fair amount of real estate and... Um, T today, the, the restrictions in Cape is sort of on a dead-end line. It's, it, it really doesn't offer much for development, most of it small local businesses. In the, in the area where Lee's property is, um, the, the property may look big. I think the porch sort of gives it that appearance, but I think it has about 1,800 square feet. Between the actual square footage of the property and the amount of parking there, in reality, that property doesn't lend itself toward, you know, it's not going to be a Walmart or anything like that. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it really, ha there's an economic piece that, that as a developer, I think people forget um, whether it makes economic sense uh, to do something. And from that perspective, I think it has a limiting factor um, uh, in, in its uh, ability to contain a large amount of people. I just don't think it's set up for that. Um, but um, I, I support the zoning changes that you guys have worked hard on and, and the committee's worked hard on, and, and I hope that you extend the, the zoning to the uh, 553. Thank you, Eric. I'm Wynn Pillsbury. Uh, in light of full disclosure, Lee Wilson is my daughter. I live at 1278 Sawyer Road. And I'm here this evening because as a real estate appraiser, which I've been now for over 40 years, I, about 10 years ago I had the occasion to appraise this property. In reviewing that appraisal, I realized at that time, 10 years ago, all the uses were the same. Irving Station, Cookie Jar, Fire Station, and everything right through there. Essentially from Charles Road to Woodland Road, with the exception of the house at either end, one being 553 Shore Road, it's a business district. Not big business, not Walmart, as the gentleman just said, but it should be in a BA zone. It just makes sense. Any appraiser that's going to go in there now and look at that property has to go through a highest and best use analysis in their own mind. And the highest and best use is not residential, given the economic factors of the other surrounding uses. Nobody can come, come in and say, this is the best, highest and best use is residential. It used to be. 
I went to College Farm School. I know the property, I know who lived there. But those days are gone. This should be included in the BA zone. I'm in favor of that change. Thank you, Wayne. Hello, uh, my name is Jennifer Bornick. I live at 26 Old Fort Road, and I'm here in support of um, changing the zoning to allow for a business at 553. Um, I Love to shop in Cape. I, whenever I can, I try to use the local businesses that are already here. I think that the um, the the home that she's going to be using is perfect for a small uh, small business, a small retail shop. Um, I when I shop in and around Cape Elizabeth at the the small businesses, I hardly ever come across more than one or two cars that are in the parking lots, and I, I don't think this would be any different than that. I don't see being a place where there would be a lot more traffic. Um, I also think that, um, you know, some people said you wouldn't want it in your neighborhood, but I do think this, this area, it suits this area. You know, maybe it wouldn't in another area, but um, I actually think that, knowing Lee, that she'll, she would do a great job, and it would be a beautiful place, and um, she would, I know, up upkeep the, um, the character of, of the house. So I'm here in support of that. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. <coughs> My name is Harry Hardy. I live at Six Giles Road. I've lived there for 37 years. And uh, if I don't talk loud enough, be sure and tell me, and uh, I'll speak up. But I'm, I'm not very happy with the way it's going. And, and I think it's important that the council understand, rightly or wrongly, you have an entire neighborhood in Charles and Warren of people who really feel that they're not being listened to. They feel like maybe they're getting bullied a little bit. And I have a few illustrations. It, our neighborhood, uh, a lot of people don't know it's in Cape Elizabeth. A lot of people who live in Cape Elizabeth think our neighborhood is in South Portland. And I'll give you an example. I've lived there for 37 years. I have had never had anyone from Cape Elizabeth running for public office who's knocked on my door. I have, however, on a number of occasions, had candidates from South Portland who have knocked on my door. And I listen politely because I'm a polite person. And I listen to them, and then I tell them, well, I'm sorry that I can't help you. I don't, you know, I don't live in South Portland. This is Cape Elizabeth. The South Portland line is up at the end of Warren Avenue. I told one young man that, and he apologized for interrupting me, didn't about face, walked down the steps, and went to the house next door <laughs> to tell him the same thing. And, and I have a couple of other examples of why I think the neighborhood sometimes is not really taken seriously. And I don't want to voice them publicly here. If any counselor would like to hear them, I'll tell you. They, they involve people, they involve no one who works for the town now or is an elected official, but it's happened in the past. Uh, I've looked at all these letters on the town website in favor of and opposed to, to uh, and there's lots of them. And I don't think there's anybody in favor of this who's actually within sight of that building. There's certainly nobody on Charles Road in favor of it, and I don't think there's anybody on Warren. There's nobody that I've talked to that's in favor. And one person came up and said that this building was surrounded by business. I suggest that person go and look again. That building is surrounded to the south by a residence, to the west by a residence, and to the east by a residence. The only abutting business is one that's across the street. Uh, there was a letter on the 25th of uh, January, there was a letter that said, there was a letter to the town council about that rezoning. And in paragraph two of this letter, it said, people who disagree with the comprehensive plan or the planning board are being disrespectful. Well, that's not disrespect. That's democracy. And in paragraph three, it suggested that anyone who disagrees is always free to move. 
they don't like what's happening. And uh, this, the paragraph five of that letter suggests that it's no longer viable as a residence. Well, it's been a residence for 100 years. It was a residence when it was purchased the last time. And why are we even discussing it? Uh, right, I'll, try, I'll try to wrap up very yep, quickly. Please. I've been here 37 years. I haven't bothered you much, so I'm going to take a minute. Oh. All right? We, we have rules to abide by. You can shut the mic off, but they're going to hear me. Harry. All right. Harry, we have rules to abide by. All right. And a dumpster. You're going to put a dumpster there? My neighbors, my neighbors, the Sanfords, if there's a dumpster in that backyard, instead of Instead of having dinner by soft music and candlelight, it's going to be headlights and, and, and horns. And I just, you know, I can't believe what, what people are considering them. I'm afraid I'm going to lose some good names. I just want to briefly comment, Jim has let me do this. It's, it's always good to see Mr. Hardy come back to public hearings. He, he came to one about 25 years ago, and as he was exiting the back door, there was a skunk there. <laughs> He opened the door, the skunk sprayed all over him, all over, all, all, all over the door, so it's always good that you have the courage to return. <laughs> Hi, uh, Glenn Rudberg, uh, 13 High Bluff Road. I'm not a skunk. <laughs> um, I'm here to support uh, 553 um, and um, the, what's in front of you. Um, I, I feel like as we look at this, and you look at this map, and we hear that people are saying that it's not surrounded by business and it's not surrounded by commercial. The reality is, it really is. Can you speak of the microphone, please? Yes. And as you, as you look at this, it is surrounded by business and it's surrounded by commercial. And I find it interesting that it stops right at this property, and I wonder why. And if I were the town council, I'd be saying to myself, well, I'd be a little concerned about creep and what happens if we do this, then what? And to me, Charles Street seems like the logical break. It seems like a mistake that, it, that this is zoned the way it is right now. And I also I want to thank Lee for what she did to the property because, as we all know, it was not in the condition that it is now. The people that owned it or before um, did not have the vision that they have. And I ask the town council to think about what if we didn't have someone that took the care and to protect the integrity of that property. And the interesting thing is, is that when I was in college, I lived in a house just like that house. It was the exact house. Same floor plan, same everything. And when we bought the property, I asked her permission to tour the property. That property was a fraternity house, and it's ruined now. I'm not suggesting that that's what's going to happen here. What I'm suggesting is, is that you have sort of, we sort of have a choice. Uh, do we have a small business with some vision that will protect the integrity of the town? Or do we potentially leave this open to our apartment house with very few rules? Um, or do we leave it to potentially someone who wants to purchase at a low dollar again, and maybe that person is interested in living across from the gas station, the fire department, the other businesses, and we ask ourselves, what happens then? So I, I commend what's happened at this point. I appreciate the neighbor's concerns, but I think it's the right thing for the town. Thank you. Thank you, Quinn. Hello, um, Ann Clark, 618 Shore Road, very close to 553 and very much in support of, of, uh, of this project. You know, people talk about this being a residential area, and I can certainly appreciate that. However, this is, uh, this is already commercially zoned. You have a fire station, you have a gas station, you have commercial buildings, you have Ann Veronica. This is what I consider and I think is commercially zoned already. Um, this is an area that a gentleman was talking about safety. There are sidewalks that go to Fort Williams and stop, and then there are sidewalks that go to South Portland. This is an area actually that is very safe for the children to walk. My daughter goes to Ann Veronica. She used to go to the Presence of Hearts, which is now closed. It is a very safe area. It has sidewalks all the way up and down. It's a place for the young kids to walk. I heard the safety issue and I thought that is completely the opposite of what I thought because to ride your bike or to walk, again, at Fort Williams then on the way up 618, uh, up Shore Road, 
they stop. So um, that issue, I find actually just completely the opposite. Um, I, again, I very much support this. I very much support small businesses coming into Cape Elizabeth. Um, I can't imagine not supporting this. And again, as Glenn Redberg stated, the integrity of the house, it is so much, it's cleaner, it's beautiful as it is, and I am completely confident that this will stay that way and it will be completely under control. So thank you very much. Thank you, Anne. Good evening. My name is Andrew Ingalls. I live in Shore Acres on Wombeck Road. I own the building beside Rudy's. And I know this is pretty much a referendum on 553 and Rudy's, but there are other considerations in the, in the BA zone that are very important to our building. We took the risk and built a building a few years ago, myself and Joel Fitzpatrick. And one of the components that was crucial to us at the time was the density. Uh, the comprehensive plan called for more activity in areas that had been developed. So we developed the building, and obviously the economy has been very, very difficult for us. There have been very few commercial people interested in the site. Um, but it also, one of the uh, components in the, in the zone that you're considering is reducing the density to 7,500 feet in that zone over an acre, which that has. So I strongly urge that you pass that. From, from our perspective, I know, as I say, 553, I have no opinion on those two buildings. Plenty of people do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. Hello. My name is Emily Bugby, and I live at 31 Cottage Farms Road. And I am appreciative of all the work that's done here. I'm very unfamiliar with these processes as a rule. However, I am familiar with safety. I'm familiar with the neighborhood, living on a street nearby, and I am a runner. And I can say that running down this section where there are not sidewalks in front of this house, I feel unsafe because across the street there aren't any sidewalks because there's a fire department and there's the cookie jar that did not have a sidewalk and the gas station has an island of a sidewalk in front of it. The sidewalk doesn't actually start until the church, which is in South Portland. The traffic changes as soon as it gets to Cape Elizabeth because of the fact that the, the width of the road changes because there are no sidewalks on either side of the street to create some margin or um, borders. I'm not in favor of changing the zoning of 553 if I don't understand what the pr principal purpose is for this zoning change. I understand that somebody has made this property much more beautiful. I really appreciate that because I watched it for a while, tried to figure out who painted that house um, so I wouldn't hire the same painter. And I wanted to see it be improved, but I'm not sure that, it, that changing the zoning is in line with just the improvements of the actual property itself. I'm hoping that when we look at the overall plan for the town, we can think about the kind of neighborhoods that we want to create. And if we create a neighborhood like this one, do we want to replicate that somewhere else in the town? And for what purpose would that neighborhood serve? I think that pedestrian access to business is a very important item. I'm fully in support of that. I just am not convinced that one piece of property in this particular neighborhood is going to address the kind of zoning changes that we might want to look at in the town as a whole, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Lovely. Mr. Chairman, I know I spoke before, but I have a question. It seems as if this hearing is covering two different issues, and I had one important point, if, uh, because it seems like it's talking not only about the change in standards, but also the expansion. Um, and in that case, I would ask leave to uh, make my other point that I had withheld. It's one point. Uh, What's the pleasure of the, the council? Sure. Okay. Thank you. I think we should yeah. wait until we've heard from everybody who wants to speak. Well, and that's fine. If I could just, before the hearing closes, uh, make that point. Thank you. I'm Joyce Wilson Sanford. I live at 1 Charles Road, Cape Elizabeth, Maine. My cheeks are 
rosy because my feelings are high. <laughs> and therefore, I, wh here's what I want to say. Thank you, council members. Thank you, ordinance committee members, for being disciplined and thorough in your work on a topic that has such high feelings. I don't know if you've noticed, but Lee and I never go to a meeting without saying hello to each other and shaking hands. And we are in total opposition <laughs> about what we want. And so I'm standing here in support of civility. Thank you. I'm starting to get hurt feelings about our property. Has anybody noticed how beautiful it is and how often we paint it? And the landscaping and the gardens and um, if there are brownie points for the 553, I want some brownie points for Charles Road. So that's, that's null and void. Um, you have an issue that is fraught with dilemmas, meaning they seem irreconcilable. If you come down Shore Road and look at this area, you see one thing. If you go stand in the middle of Charles Road, uh, where the cars used to circle around, you get a whole different feel of a neighborhood. This is a really very strategic decision that you need to make. So I, I, the legal groundwork has to be good. The comprehensive plan has to be looked at in terms of how is it being translated into action. And then we need to talk about the people impact. And at that point, it's time for a more collaborative conversation. Um, that's how I would go about it, because you really have a bowl of spaghetti on your plates. Um, and lastly, I'm just sorry that that property was bought as a residence when it was wanting to be used as a business. Thank you, Joyce. Hi, I'm Skip Murray, 20 Grove Road. I'm here as the owner of L.P. Murray & Sons, probably one of the most offensive businesses in Cape Elizabeth, to some people. <laughs> but I try hard, and I guess that's my point, is I think a business can coexist in a residential neighborhood, which I do. Um, but I have total faith in before the, the planning board and the town council on a few business adventures before that if the conditions and approvals are met, in other words, the businesses do and say what they mean, and the council uh, puts the stipulations on that the residents are happy with, that if they work together, you can coexist. If an excavation company can coexist in the center of town with residential neighbors around me and my pit on Fowler Road with trucks in and out every 20 minutes during the day, and, and I, I do hear complaints, but you have to work both sides. Um, and on that other point, um, when the two work together, I'm very proud to do the work in Cape Elizabeth for the citizens of the Cape and the other business of the Cape. So I think I'm here pro-business to try and create more business in Cape Elizabeth. I was also on the comprehensive plan committee for that one reason. I put my time in the comprehensive plan committee to promote more business in Cape. And you know, to, to the betterment of these neighbors, there is no good place for business in Cape Elizabeth till it's given a chance. And I think after the process is over and the decisions are made, um, if it is in favor of the businesses for both, uh, Rudy's and uh, 553, given a chance, I think that uh, it can work out. Thank you. Thank you, Skip. Good evening. My name is Joyce Freeman, and I live at Three Childs Road. And we are um, right here. Um, we're next to Sanford's. We don't know about the property that we are talking about, but we can see the backyard. We have lived there not quite as long as the Harveys have, but when we bought the property, Yes, the cookie jar was there, Kelly's Fish Market was there, um, all of the businesses were there. That was wonderful. That's why we bought there, because we also thought we had Cottage Farm School for our children to be able to go to. That changed, as you well know. The person bought the house, as Joyce said, as a residence, knowing it was a residence. There was no reason to change it for a business. 
at all. And I would like to look at each and every one of you and ask you, if you lived on Child's Road, where either the Wilson Sanfords live or where we live, and you had bought your house 30 years ago, could you sit here and graciously say, yes, we will change it to a business because this woman bought the house. We understand economic times. We understand everything about it. Would you want it in your backyard? I don't care how quiet, whatever she's going to have. I used to go to the gift shop up the street also. I also remember when there were Christmas sales, when the streets would be lined on Cottage Road for the sales. I don't want that. And we want our neighborhood to stay the same. And I really want you to put yourself in our shoes and in our house and see if you would like it in your backyard, because all these people that have stood up here to say tonight that they live such and such place, they, and they support small businesses, and they can't understand why the neighbors, you want it in your backyard, I bet you wouldn't. Thank you. Hey, Joyce. <laughs> I'm David Freeman. <laughs> And there's not too much more I can say except for two things. Number one is I wanted to point out, and everybody else that is opposed to 5 to 3 has pointed out, is that the people who support it live away. And the other thing is, is that the water has already been tested. And I don't know if you're aware of it, but it's been rented out periodically since she's owned it. And people have lived in it for periods of time, whether it be a week or she could better tell you how long. But we can attest, uh, the Sanfords and, and ourselves, that some of the people who have rented it have not been very um, good neighbors, if you will. They've sat out on the porch. Now, here's what the problem is. The problem is the proximity of this building. The people that sat out on the porch were just sitting there having dinner, and, of course, I'm sure they had some wine. And as the evening went along, the voices got louder. So 11 o'clock it was loud, 11.30 it was louder, 12 o'clock it was louder. Now, if I'd known that this can of worms was going to come up, I probably would have called up the police department and complained. But being a good neighbor, I kind of sucked it up. But we've already had the experience of people being in this building in the proximity to our houses, and in the summertime, at 9 o'clock at night, Noise travels. There's very little traffic through there. And so I'm definitely opposed to this being rezoned from residential to business because of the proximity to our neighborhood and the impact, the negative impact it's going to have. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. I'm Maureen Kelly, and I live at 44 Warren Avenue, and my property is right next to the Freemans, and it abuts the Sanfords, and this property, too, is in my backyard, and I've lived there 15 years, and it's a very densely populated neighborhood, as we all know, um, and I chose to live there because I love to sit on my front porch in the summer and enjoy my neighbors and enjoy the kids that come through and the ones that used to walk through my yard to go to the cookie jar, but I'm not going to enjoy... Uh, the situation with 553 being changed to a business. And what David and Joyce just said, um, I have to ditto everything because I heard the same noises escalating and the people were having a fun time. And I didn't want to be a bad neighbor, so I didn't complain either. We just sucked it up, as he said. And, um, but I just want it on the record that I'm very much in opposition to this move for the value of our properties in the neighborhood, and that's not why we bought there. And if I wanted to be behind the business, I would have purchased behind the business. Thank you for listening, and thank you all for doing a great job. Thank you, Maureen. How are you doing? Uh, I'm John Valley. I live at 31 Macaulay Road. Um, I am in support of the Shore Road. Um, I do support small businesses, and I think it's good for the town of Cape Elizabeth. Um, and I also is up here supporting uh, Rudy's of the Cape. Thank you. Thanks, John. My name's Carl Pearson. I live at 27 Fowler Road. I'm in the butter of Skip Murray's sand pit. And he's not a bad neighbor. It, it does raise dust, and it causes debris, and uh, 
you know, this is all the dynamic once again in the town. Uh, I'm not going to speak in favor against your road. Uh, I've had correspondence with some of the neighbors relative to highest and best use, and Wynn Pillsbury mentioned that before. And these things are all going to have to work out. And your council, gosh, I don't want to be in your position. Uh, because it is tough, especially with that property. Uh, one thing that's been a recurrent theme, the neighbors have talked about parties that have gone on there. If it is, in fact, a business, and I'm not sure what Lee's planned, but in essence, if it does close at 5, then you might have the Christmas parties and things like that. But you're probably going to have more peace and quiet than if you had an unruly neighbor. Just food for thought. Um, on that same vein, uh, Rudy's of the Cape, 10 o'clock. Let's see, 10 minutes from now, they'd, they'd be closing. Uh, it's too bad because this meeting's not going to be over by then, so no one can go for a cold one after that. <laughs> but you could go over to the Ocean House Pizza across the street here, and you could have a beer there. Uh, and anywhere in the town center zone, which I believe that a pub or that type of restaurant could be allowed, and they all abut residential zones. So what I'm trying to make the point here is, if there's an impact being 100 feet within a residential zone for a, prop, a business that serves liquor, then why wouldn't that be the same in any other zone in Cape? So I think you, you, you're sort of setting a precedent there that, that really, as Mary alluded to, might be a spot zoning thing, and it's just picking on one business. Uh, the outside dining or the outside uh, drinking, what's the difference if a neighbor has a party? They can stay out until 11 o'clock, and they can make quite a bit of noise, as long as it's not up to certain. All these different things, you've got mechanisms in the planning uh, board and the ordinances to restrict times or noise, uh, to have a site plan which specifies that you can have this activity in a certain area. There's mechanisms there, but by setting it all up and specifically pinpointing one business, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, lastly, on that note, as far as uh, businesses, I don't think that the BA zone out in the Rudy's area is the same as the BA zone over at uh, the Cottage Farms area. I think, you know, one is urban, one is rural. I think you might want to revisit that and just say maybe there's got to be two differentiations here between the zones, point-specific topography and geography. Uh, just food for thought. And as one of the first speakers said this evening, too, where there's some possible verbiage uh, that's misplaced, maybe it might be a good idea. I hate to say it, and you hate to hear the word table, but it might be a good idea to revisit it and make sure that the language is all clear before any decisions are made. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Good evening. I'm Tim Thompson. I live at Six Pine Ridge Road. Uh, I also have a couple of small business uh, buildings right in the town center. And uh, I understand, and first of all, I'd like to thank all the, the town council members and uh, Michael as well, although, Michael, you get paid for this pretty well. so. But, uh, and, and the ordinance committee for all their hard work. And, and just watching all my neighbors, uh, I've got friends and neighbors that are lining up along the wall here on both sides of this. So your job, I guess that's part of what you have to do is You've got friends and neighbors lining it up on each side of this uh, issue, and it's got to be it's got to be one of the reasons why it's a, a tough job. But uh, what I what I the points I'd like to make, and there's been some great points, and I'm not going to I'm not going to ditto some of the ones that have already been before us. One of the uh, I came here to speak about the Shore Road property tonight, but one of the uh, uh, before I get into that, I do want to uh, voice my s strong support for uh, the the business at at Rudy's. The, the business, uh, the people that run that business are our town. Uh, they live in this town. They've raised their children in this town. Uh, they're very responsible. Uh, the people that I, I mean, uh, petitions are one of those funny things. You can get a lot of people to sign them on both sides usually. I, all I know is when I'm in there on a Friday or a Saturday night, there certainly is an awful lot of people that live in that area that are enjoying, enjoying that new establishment, that restaurant. So uh, I certainly support what they're doing. I, I see them very responsibly running it and being very careful about uh, alcohol consumption and uh, I think they're just doing a great job. And Anything we can do to help a small business owner like, like the two of them uh, get a chance to succeed, I think it makes an awful lot of sense. 
The Shore Road property, the reason I'm, I'm particularly uh, interested in that one is I do have some, re some rental properties over on Shore Road, and I'm constantly, I mean, there's just always people wanting to rent in that area. Uh, I think the property that, that uh, is there has been tremendously improved upon. Um, it's, it's, it's a building that was deteriorating, was a, uh, not, not maybe an eyesore, but was certainly on the way to an eyesore. And its improvement as you come into town on that side uh, of town is, is definitely uh, very noticeable. Uh, we need more businesses in this town. It's not easy to become a bit small business owner in this town. Anything we can do, I think, that can make that a little easier. It does comply with our comprehensive plan. It's something that we're, in, we're encouraging. We want to encourage that to happen. The planning board, one of the things that, that we can't forget is the planning board passed on this back in October. Um, we've talked a little, people have talked a little bit about its best use. Uh, I think it really truly is best used in this eight to six or eight to five time frame where you've got businesses closing, people going home at night. You're not going to have somebody sitting out on the back deck rowdy and drinking beer and throwing uh, beer bottles around. It's going to be quieter at night and not noisier. So I, I do think it's, a, it's very much a positive. It's got a very positive impact on our town. It's not going to increase the number of kids that are going to have to go through our school. It's not going to have an impact there. It's going to have a low impact on our dump. There's just a lot of low impact pieces I think we need to take into consideration. Its value is going to be improved over time. And one of the nice things we get to do as a town from a tax standpoint, as its value goes up, we get to tax it a little bit more. So if it goes up more in value as a small business and housing small businesses and bringing employees to this town, I think we have two great examples of small business owners that are trying to accomplish that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. My name is Edward Patterson, and I live at Two Charles Road. I'm quartered on the outskirts of the Tara Estate over here. And uh, I'd like to point out that these maps are the same size, but they're not the same scale. And this is far larger scale. But they're also not being treated equally. I know that the comprehensive plan says that these areas shall, business development will, will increase without changing the configuration of the existing BA zones. This is going to change that zone. And it's going to change it permanently. And regardless of all the kind words that have been said about Lee and what she's done, the fact is that once it's changed, someone else can go in there and we don't know what we've got. So all of those arguments in favor of it, the wonderful quietness of her shop are really pointless. Uh, don't change the configuration of the BA zone. Treat everybody equally. Are we, do we have less rights, fewer rights than the other people in the Cape? The people that don't even know that this is Charles Road, not Charles Street. I mean, it's just totally ridiculous. I'm so tired of talking about this. In fact, I really talked enough. Good night. Thank you, Ed. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Mitchell, uh, Mitchell and Associates, and I represent Lee Wilson. Uh, as many of you know, Lee has recently completed restoring the two and a half story Victorian style structure to retain the architectural character while preserving the neighborhood fabric. 553 Shore Road is a property that includes an area of less than a quarter of an acre. It has frontage and direct access to Shore Road. It abuts the existing business A district on both the northerly and westerly sides. It is adjacent to an existing multifamily apartment building, and it is located across Shore Road from the Irving Station, Engine 1 Fire Station, and the former Cookie Jar. The surrounding commercial businesses, uh, all within 100 yards, include a mixed-use retail and commercial building, uh, and Veronica retail shops in a multi-story office building. Lee is very interested in creating a mixed-use building which would incorporate the following uses. A small boutique shop on the first floor 
small office on the second floor and possibly a studio apartment on the top floor. These are all quiet, low-impact, appropriate, and compatible uses for this part of Shore Road in town. This area of town along Shore Road has real potential. With a few added improvements to Shore Road, you could really start to create a village feeling or a traditional neighborhood with more of a pedestrian inviting environment. Mixed uses add vitality. I've heard the comment, what if the town approves the rezoning and then Lee decides to sell the property in the future? Valid comment valid concern. My, my response would be, if you read the proposed language of the BA district, you will find it very restrictive. The guidelines and standards will be in place. A change of use would have to go through the process of planning board and site plan review. And as town councilors, you know that you have to believe and trust in the process. The ordinance committee, I believe, did a very good job in tailoring the standards of the BA district to be compatible with the nearby neighborhoods. This is a very tasteful project that will be an asset to this area, an area which is currently dominated by a gas station, a fire station, and an apartment building. Lee has extended her hand to the neighbors early on in the process, but when some people equate change to bad, it is almost impossible to change minds. I strongly encourage you to embrace this zone change, which will enhance this area, and as often the case, may even motivate improvements to existing properties. Thank you. Thank you, John. Hi, Carl Dittrich, 500 Ocean House Road. Don't have enough information to have an opinion on 551, but it kind of saddens me and confuses me, the, all this chit-chat. I'm still waiting for a common sense committee. A um, hundred years ago, thousands of people came to Cape Elizabeth, thousands of them, every weekend night. Then they went down to the casino, they gambled, they drank. It hasn't affected the town. It seems like it's now changed into a beautiful little town. Um, I sit out in front of my front yard and I see all these people running by and biking by. I was thinking about taking up biking and running, but I want to get my bike bought in Cape Elizabeth, fixed in Cape Elizabeth, maybe buy a pair of sneakers. I don't want to have to go to Walmart. All the retail stores in Cape Elizabeth would all fit inside the new Walmart. I'm not sure what the, you know, so everyone gets in their cars, the green town, everybody wants to be green, recycled, but then they'll have to get in their HUVs and Hummers and even the little Priuses, but they have to drive out of town to get all the services. I don't understand it. If we want to cut down the traffic, why don't we just close Fort Williams? Let the grass grow, save the money. The traffic would be in the summer. It seems like there's just a few chosen businesses, and, and that's it. If you weren't grandfathered in, then, then you're done. Um, I'm losing my little credit union, and so now I have to drive to South Portland. I don't really want to drive to South Portland. I'd like it all to be right here. I don't see why if we're the, the best education, the well-to-do town, why don't we have well-to-do, good little businesses for our good little people? I don't, you know, I, I just, it, it, it really confused me. We're a town of lawyers, doctors, you know, if you get hurt here, it's great. Boom. There's the doctor, there's the lawyer. But where's the services? I don't, I don't understand it. I don't want to drive over to to the mall and the Walmart, or even down to Mill Creek. Why can't we have some businesses here? It seems like it's a big battle. Nobody, NIMBY, nobody wants it in their backyard. I understand all that. But things change, this and that. Some of the businesses were there long before the people bought their houses. Even if they lived in a place bought 35 years ago, there was a business there 40 years ago. It's just sad that we're, we're so well educated, yet we're bickering and this and that. We can't have little businesses in our little nice town. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Please, please. That was nice. Lighten it up a little. I'm Lee Wilson. <laughs> I live at uh, 82 Two Lights Road, and I am the owner of 553 Shore Road. 
Um, when we first started this process, which will be four years this September, um, all we saw and wanted was this great house that needed saving. And yes, we were told it could be a couple of hard years. Um, but we felt it was worth it. It deserved to be preserved. And we, as all the other prospective buyers, wondered why it had, ever been, had never been included in the BA zone in previous um, comprehensive plans. And I think it did just fall through the cracks because no one did stand up and give it that effort. It's a hard effort. Um, all we hear in this town is we need more business. I don't want to reiterate too much, but um, we, we hear it, yet we turn our backs on it. Um, we make it near impossible for someone to come in and open a new one, let alone try and make it thrive. Um, my cheeks are rosy, too. <laughs> no one wants it in their backyard, and yet you can never change that. Um, but if it's, if it's not here, in this already existing VA district, then where? You have to start somewhere. This makes a lot of sense, and I hope you can see that. So that was four years ago, two years past our expert expectations. We have rented it weekly in the summer. Um, pretty well, not totally successfully, but we, we've hung in there. Um, and that'll pay for the shortages that we suffer in the winter. Um, the three winter tenants that we have have not stayed for the whole winter, but made it through, um, kept it heated. Um, and I have been very selective in who I rent to for obvious reasons. I have a big interest in this building too and in this neighborhood, believe it or not. And I could do that because I knew it was a short-term situation um, that I expected and made provisions for. But if it turns out to be a long-term situation, I won't have the luxury of being so selective. Knowing the restrictions on business versus the restrictions on residential, and there aren't many on residential, you know what this is going to mean for the property and for your neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. I got to remind you, you, you only wanted to make one point. That's correct. Okay. And, um, and I'd ask you to make it brief, please. please. Yes, all right. I'd like to distribute um, the map. This is the zoning map that was uh, downloaded from the, um, uh, the town website. Uh, I had not uh, given part two of uh, the comments with regard to the change of the uh, zone uh, for 553, uh, thinking that was going to be a subject of a separate and a subsequent uh, public hearing, but it seems like it's all together. Uh, here's the letter that goes uh, with it. Um, and here's the one point. Uh, you'll see on the map that we've just distributed, uh, which is downloaded from the website, you'll see the structures that are on there. This map doesn't show the structures. Uh, this is Miss Nicholas's property that abuts uh, the 553 property. And then, of course, here's the Sanford property on the other side. The map shows the zoning line goes through her home. You see the structure on the line. That when you're in her home, that means that the commercial side the commercial part of her property is less than the residential side because her backyard is larger than the front yard. The, I don't know what this map is, but it's not the official zoning map. And the reason why this is so significant is because you don't have a uh, this residential property, 553, next to a full commercial zone. It's only a piece. You can't rezone the part back here, which is actually shorter, um, to a commercial because you're going to have spot zoning. And that's the basic point, is you're creating a little island of land between one residential zone and another residential zone. And that is the important point that uh, uh, we wanted to uh, make sure you knew. You, of course, you know there's been a lot of confusion with Ms. Nicholas's property where sometimes it's been changed. Oh, in the course of the past year, her assessment records would say it's commercial, then it would say it's residential, then it's part commercial, part residential, without notice to her. 
Um, and the zoning map has changed from being commercial this way, residential this side. It's now been flipped this way. If we accept it as the official zone, most of her property is residential. And so you have a spot zoning issue. I was asked to address the legal issues. Thank you. And I appreciate you letting me have that final point. You're welcome. I have just a second that my suggested changes to the ordinance, if you'd like to. And my wife wanted me to point out that I misspoke. We're at 597 Shore Road. So I apparently said 557. Thank you very much. Others who would like to speak in the public hearing regarding the proposed uh, amendments to the BA zone? Good evening. My name is Jamie Wagner uh, from off of Two Lights Road on Hannaford Cove. Uh, I just got here a little late, I'm sorry, so I don't know if it's been addressed at all, but I spoke with Mr. Back, uh, Backer by email earlier in the week, and uh, I just had some concern about the proposed amendment to the um, definition of the term restaurant, and I don't have it with me here, but uh, I believe it uh, limits the sales percentage to 25% for alcoholic beverages. And uh, I mean, my interpretation of that amendment would be to prevent Cape Elizabeth from having any bars. So I'd be concerned about that as a restriction on uh, further development of business in Cape Elizabeth. And um, I, I personally, I think that Cape Elizabeth is, uh, could use uh, one or two bars. And uh, <laughs> It's um, a long drive into Portland, and uh, I've heard many Cape residents uh, say the same thing, that uh, it'd be convenient to have a bar in town. So uh, I'll submit some written suggestion, but uh, I'd like to put that on the agenda for you all to consider. Thank you. Thank you, James. Peter Carter. Since retirement, I reside at Ruby's. If I'm not sleeping, <laughs> I'm not there when you get there. Just wait a minute. Skip Murray was up earlier speaking about his last inquiry and his gravel pit that's located in a residential zone. In the 10 years I spent on this town's planning board, the most restrictive business was always his and his father's within the amount of conditions and restrictions we placed on his permit to keep operating. Uh, in looking over what Ruby's had had to go through the last three years, they are now the number one business as far as restrictions and conditions on their permit of use. In regards to the earlier gentleman saying about we could use a couple of extra bars in Cape Elizabeth, I'd like to offer you the fall, following historical fact, which I promise you is true. The first ongoing meeting, scheduled meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous ever held in the state of Maine was held here in Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Anyone else would like to speak? In the public hearing, seeing none, I'll declare the public hearing closed at 9.13. Item number 97-2009, uh, we have before us zoning ordinance amendments and a zoning map, proposed zoning map change. Would someone uh, care to Put a motion on the floor. David? Um, I move that the uh, council uh, table this matter until our next monthly, regular monthly meeting, which would be in June. Um, and that in the interim, we schedule this for another workshop to give us an opportunity to discuss and debate all the comments we've heard tonight um, and make our best efforts to tweak where tweaking is appropriate um, and accept where accepting is appropriate and come back with uh, a version in June um, that is modified based on comments that we've heard tonight. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Was that a second? 
That was a second. Okay. We have uh, a motion and second to table uh, this item until our June meeting with a workshop to, to occur before that meeting uh, to further discuss some of the For A little background information. We did have a workshop on this item, and uh, Planner Maureen O'Mara did a tremendous job in, in walking us through all the proposed amendments. And there were several issues uh, during that walkthrough that we had some concerns about, and we just didn't have time to talk about them uh, that night. And so we, we kind of sensed we wanted to hear from the public to help, uh, help us fine tune our comments. And that's the reason, I presume, for uh, Councillor Backer's motion and, uh, and the second. Discussion on the motion? There's no discussion on table motion. I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, all in favor of tabling, show it to be unanimous. Thank you. Item 98-2009, uh, shoreland zoning and zoning map amendments. Uh, I'll, give the, I'll give the chamber uh, two minutes to clear. Those people would like to leave now. David, your motion, I only have four minutes. <laughs> Everything you said after that, I guess. <laughs> And I will call the meeting back to order. Okay, I'll call the meeting back to order. Please, quiet in the chamber. Thank you. Item 98-2009, Shoreland Zoning and Zoning Map Amendments. Do I have a motion? David? Uh, I uh, move that we refer the proposed Shoreland Zoning and Zoning Map Amendments to the Ordinance Committee. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? Show it to be unanimous. Item number 99-2009, Solid Waste Ordinance. Uh, Go ahead, Anne. Anne? Um, I, <coughs> excuse me. I move that we set a public hearing for Monday, June 8, 2009, at 7.30 p.m. at the Town Hall on the proposed revisions to the Health and Sanitation Ordinance uh, providing for a substitute Article 2 relating to solid waste and recycling. Could I ask the people in the back of the room to please leave the building? Step outside if you're continuing to talk. 
I second Ann's motion. Move and second. I'm sorry, Ann. That's quite that's all right. really bugged me. That, that, that's, I'm glad you spoke up. Thank you. Thanks. Moved and seconded uh, to refer this item to public hearing on June 8th. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Item number 100-2009, the town center intersection. Uh, you will recall that on November 10th, 2008, the town council referred to this uh, meeting, this meeting tonight, the disposition of the deferral of the federal, state, local project to signalize the Route 77 Shore Road, Scott Dyer Road intersection and to make pedestrian improvements. The Maine Department of Transportation wrote to PACTS on March 26, 2009, that the balance of $437,503 in PACTS funds should be reassigned to other projects in the PACTS region. The Maine Department of Transportation is also suggesting that PACTS and or the, the town uh, could be asked to reimburse Maine Department of Transportation $133,000 $835 if the project does not move ahead by August of 2016. Uh, would someone like to put a motion on the floor? Uh, I, I would like to put a motion on the floor. I would, I would like to move that this issue be tabled uh, until the November 2009 town council meeting. Um, in the past few weeks, we have had uh, no fewer than two more uh, accidents at the town center intersection. Fortunately, neither involved uh, serious personal injury. But it's apparent to me that uh, some of the passive measures which have been installed are questionable in their effectiveness at this point, and I, I think it deserves uh, a little more time to, to, uh, ex to uh, build a, an experience uh, as to how these minor uh, things are, are working. As I said, when this issue first came before us, um, citizen safety is a priority for me. It's about dollars and cents. If, God forbid, we had a fatality at that intersection, and I knew that at one time I had had a, the, the ability to prevent, perhaps prevent it, and I consciously chose not to, um, I would submit my resignation from the town council that day or the next uh, on the town manager's desk. Uh, I'd, I'd find it very difficult to live with myself. I don't think there's a need to hurry this. Uh, I don't think we need to keep this, uh, to, to, to dismiss this right now. I, I would prefer to see us watch that intersection for a while longer, uh, see if we can measure some improvement there. I don't think we can measure improvement there based on the two accidents that have just occurred there uh, yet. But I'm not willing to uh, let that money go at this point. So we need a second to the motion. Yeah. So my motion is that we table this until the November 2009 town council meeting. I second your motion. Moved and seconded. Uh, discussion on the motion. There, there is no discussion on tabling. I'm sorry. You're right again. <laughs> you're still, you're still right. There is discussion on the advisability of the date that you table a motion okay. to, the okay. condition that's set to a tabling motion. There okay. is? Yeah. Well, could I ask a question then as to why November? And I mean, that, that would be a year from from the time it was originally tabled. It would give us. It would be a full year. Can I ask a question? Because he got to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, what type of things are we going to do to watch? I, I mean, I'm assuming that we want to uh, assess in some way to before we get to that November meeting, what might we be doing, actions might we be taking? Any thoughts? I think we, well, I think if we can keep records of accidents near misses, those types of things. So the police uh, department will do that, or somebody will be assigned to do so, that? Uh, yeah, somebody would have to be assigned to do that. But the motion on the floor is the table until November uh, 2009. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion to table? Oh, I had a question. A question? Um, About I wish timing? we had an opportunity to talk a little more before we tabled it, but... I'll vote it down. Uh-oh. Vote down the motion to table. Well, I, I'm not saying I don't want to okay. prolong it. I just want to talk about it more. But I guess I, this, I can't. I'm not allowed to talk about it right now. Okay. All in favor of the motion to table? Three, 
One, two, three, four. Opposed? Three. The motion to table carries. Can I just ask a quick question, Jim, now? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I guess I didn't interpret any of this uh, verbiage in our memo that we would be forfeiting funds <coughs> right now, but could, could we get some clarification, Mike, on that? In other words, was there a need to act? Is, it seems like the deadline is 2016. The, the, there were many, this was a letter, if I might, Mr. Chairman, sure. this was a letter that was written by Cat uh, Fuller at, at MDOT, who's the, the head of planning, uh, to John Duncan, who's the, the director of, the, of PACS. Uh, you know, th there were many different questions in this letter. Uh, you know, and some of it seems to be contradictory to letters we received earlier. Uh, you know, so I, you know, I'm, I'm hesitant to say exactly what Ms. Fuller meant in, in every instance. You know, and, and it's also clear to me that, you know, regardless of what action the council takes, PACs might take an independent action. And, you know, and if I get wind of that, I will advise the council of that. But uh, I'll be in touch with PACs tomorrow, let them know of the decision, and request that they honor uh, the council's desire to uh, have until November 2009 uh, without reallocating the money. Good. Thank you for keeping us informed, Mike. Can I ask a procedural question? Sure. Is there a way to make a motion that enables you to have a conversation before you make a motion to table something? Because, I, I, I mean, I grew up in a family where you were always allowed to talk. I asked for a motion. <laughs> Nobody said anything, so I made a motion. Okay, it just leaves me frustrated. I'd rather have the, make a motion that gives the ability for the council to talk, because in general I feel like we do a pretty good job of working out, and then we can vote to postpone it rather than a table that stops all discussion, which leaves me feeling quite frustrated. Sorry for your frustration. Well... And I, I would just echo that. Uh, I have seen sometimes where somebody in the council says, I'm contemplating a motion to table, but here are my thoughts. Just because I might have voted for your motion, Jim. I just didn't really feel like I had enough uh, background or understanding. Okay. So, I what that's worth. Well, no. We're all working together. Okay. Item number 101-2009, Ottawa Road Pump Station Combined Sewer Overflow. <coughs> Uh, Mike, would you like to give us a little background on this, please? I will very, very briefly. Uh, what you have before you is a four-page agreement, of which the fourth page is just signature lines, uh, that's between South Portland, Cape Elizabeth, and the Portland Water District, trying to deal with a, a, a combined sewer overflow on Ottawa Road. What combined sewer overflow is, is when there's particularly aggressive storms, lots of water comes down in a very short period of time, the pump station doesn't handle it all, and what you get is, is extremely diluted wastewater combined with tons and tons of rainwater, uh, millions of gallons, in fact, of, of rainwater that goes directly into the bay. The uh, Environmental Protection Agency of the United States, as well as the DEP, and many citizens uh, are concerned about con combined sewer overflows and would like it to stop. We've been working actually now for a couple of years with the Portland Water District and with an engineering firm, Wright Pierce, uh, on dealing with this combined sewer overflow. What, what will happen if this is approved is that, is that Wright Pierce, the engineering firm, will go forward doing some analysis, doing some studies uh, of potential solutions uh, to deal with this problem. We've already uh, applied to uh, the DEP for a, a, what they call a NIPDES permit. I think I sent a copy of, or I put it in your boxes, it might be up front in your boxes, a copy of the draft permit. Uh, but this, you know, I would like to say, this is the potential eventually to be well in excess of a million dollars in cost uh, to, to address this particular issue, knowing the, the physical constraints we have in that area, uh, knowing the, uh, the, the, the potential requirements. Uh, so it, it's not an insignificant uh, issue. Uh, and it's also, you know, an issue how it's going to be paid for because, you know, even though there's sewer lines, most of the water is not coming from sewerage, it's coming from other places. So it, it wouldn't be necessarily just a, a general fund issue. 
for this study work and analysis work, the, the share is uh, one-third to the city of South Portland and two-thirds to the Portland Water District and, and the town of Cape Elizabeth. I'd like to point out that the Portland Water District share is 100 percent assumed by the town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, so we will actually have two-thirds of the cost of this particular study, and that's based on a preliminary analysis of where the problem seems to lie and uh, where the flows are coming from. Uh, when I saw that, I, I questioned the Water District at length about it. We had, a, we had a conference call upon it, and upon reflection and advice from the Water District, it's a very fair allocation uh, to, the, to the town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh -huh. uh, you know, whatever work would eventually have to be done as a result of this would be shared, any joint work would be shared, the two-thirds, one-third, but there's a lot of individual work that could be done in each of the two municipalities, and that work would be 100 percent at the cost of that individual municipality or of the homeowners who are, who are in fact contributing to the flows going to the system with such things as roof drains and cellar drains and, and uh, some of those type things. You know, already today we started construction on a little project on Oakhurst Road, replacing a line, uh, trying to, you know, deal, deal with this issue. Uh, it is expensive. It does have the potential to be expensive. Uh, we, we are, for the first time, actually going to have a licensed overboard discharge. One of the, the major issues with the, with the uh, DEP is it hasn't been licensed. And, and you know, the preliminary review of the, the Water District is more the expert on this than we are. Uh, they're beginning to look at the, the draft agreement, but, it, it, but re, my first read of it, uh, the, the, the draft permit, uh, provides that it's pretty much in thinking what, what we thought it was going to be. We're particularly pleased that there weren't real early deadlines and that uh, it gives us really a couple of years to study this. And it does take a couple of years because you need to really look at where the flows are coming from uh, over, over a, a period of time. But it's a, it could be a potentially very expensive challenge uh, for the town of Cape Elizabeth. Mr. Chair, could I ask the manager yeah. a question? Mike, I, I just wanted to make sure I understood when you talked about um, the costs, a portion 33% to South Portland, correct? And two-thirds to Cape Elizabeth. Well, it says 67% jointly to the town and the, dist and the water district. Yeah. So does that mean we each get half of that? or The, the district, how does, how does it does, it's immaterial. The district charges back for Cape Elizabeth sewer work 100% of their cost okay. Okay. Uh, to Cape Elizabeth. Okay. I just, I didn't understand that. Thank you. Skip, we need to dig a hole somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if I may ask a question of our manager. Sure. Um, I'm reluctant to ask this, but the consequence of not authorizing you to sign this agreement is what? I, I would imagine it would take a little while, but you'd probably, uh, you know, first have a visit from uh, the Conservation Law Foundation suing the state of Maine for not, that would probably be the first action, they would sue the <coughs> state of Maine for not uh, enforcing the uh, federal law. And that's, you know, that's not a negative comment about the Conservation Law Foundation. They're, a, they're an interest group that looks after the to ensure that the environmental laws, particularly as they particularly focus on some of these wastewater issues, uh, that they've already uh, been uh, aggressively uh, seeking compliance in the state of Maine, you know, within, within their rights under the law. Then ultimately, does the town of Cape Elizabeth get sued by DEP? It would, it would probably be more fines and consent. DEP usually looks for consent decrees, but there could be fines as well. But this is mandated by federal law, right? Yes, it, it, not this particular agreement, but the, no, no, but but the addressing the CSO with program. best practical manners, and I don't know if that's exact wording, this combined sewer overflow it, it is a mandate of, uh, of, these, uh, of the law. Yeah. Michael, I, yeah. I have a question. Um, just because I'm trying to get this clear in my, my own mind. I, you know, I will be supporting this, but I wonder, um, are, are there mechanisms to divert this rainwater? You, from what your description was, 
it sounds like there's the bulk of the problem stems from rainwater runoff. Is there a way to deal with that other than putting yeah. into the sewer? Through through the chairman, uh, the you know what the, we'd really be looking at is stormwater separation. That we install stormwater systems that that in essence pick up all of this material that is now going to the sewer. You know things going to the sewer. You know, simply you have a manhole cover and it goes in. The, we discovered on Oakhurst Road, the, why, the main reason we're doing that one right now, is there was a two by four in the middle of the sewer pipe. How did that happen? We don't know. Did, did you see the two by, were you down there? You haven't got to the two by four yet? Yeah. Okay. Maybe there's a two by four in this one. No, this is, <laughs> this, this takes a lot of the flow in the North Shore area. Uh, and you know, and it, it it works itself, you know, back through eventually to a. There's actually a sewer line that's a dedicated Cape Elizabeth line that also picks up Drew Road, that goes all the way back to the treatment plant in South Portland down their city streets and whatever. And it's nothing but transporting Cape Elizabeth sewage down to the the South Portland treatment plant. It's a pretty amazing system, but uh, uh, you know, and what this really is, most of the flow that goes into this area comes from Cape Elizabeth. There's a little bit of it that comes from South Portland. Mm -hmm. But South Portland, the, the Drew Road, there's real huge issues with those homes. They've looked, you know, South Portland's even looked at maybe getting so that they could pump that flow somewhere else so they could be done with the problem. Uh, so it's important we work closely with our neighbors. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but hopefully Wright PS will do the analysis and and, and I don't remember exactly, they, they got a proposal from Wright Pierce. I don't remember the exact amount, but uh, you know, it's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh -huh. yeah. Other questions of the manager before we put a motion on the floor? In the low hundreds of thousands. <laughs> Would someone like to put a motion on the floor, Ann? I move that we authorize the town manager to sign an agreement with the city of South Portland and with the Portland Water District to coordinate plans to address the combined sewer overflow on Drew Road at the South Portland Cape Elizabeth property line. Second. Boundary line. I Moved and seconded. I just wanted to have a quick, I really thank you for your questions on, on this. I, it's, a, it's an important issue with potential long-term liability and you know, at, at some point when we get over other workshops, it wouldn't hurt for you to have a workshop on this that we cover this issue with some professional consultants there that can better answer Thank questions. Thank you also for providing reasonable answers to our questions. <laughs> Further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Item number 102-2009. Uh, underground buried cable permit. Central Maine Power has requested uh, an underground utility permit in the right of way for a buried cable on Old Ocean House Road for approximately 50 feet near the Boat Cove Road. So moved. Second. Moved, moved and seconded. Discussion on the motion? David? Does this um, have any adverse impact on the abutting property owners? And if so, have they been consulted on this? Uh, the, the abutting property owner, when you, when you look at the map, it's, it's the person who's going to benefit on Boat Cove Road, that lot owner. So there's no adverse impact? No, it's all underground anyway. Yeah. Along, and it's all in the right of way. And then it, it, if you look at the map, it's right that little section of Old Ocean House Road where it abuts Boat Cove Road. Other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Unanimous. We offer our citizens a second opportunity to uh, discuss the items that were not on tonight's agenda. Your chance, guys. Seeing none, uh, before we adjourn, I would like to announce uh, future meetings and events. Uh, tomorrow is the official uh, vote for the uh, citizen uh, validation of the school budget as, as it was approved by the town council. Uh, so if you haven't voted already, uh, make sure you, you get to the polls tomorrow. The polls will be open at 7 a.m. and closing at 8 p.m. Uh, at the high school. 
This Thursday, May 14th, we have a workshop, uh, primarily uh, energy oriented. We'll be receiving or discussing the Alternative Energy Committee's report and also the energy audit that uh, they engaged. And we'll also be discussing the U.S. Mayor's Climate Protection Agreement resolution as was proposed by Cool Cape. On May 25th, uh, I'm happy to say that uh, we will once again have our Memorial Day Parade and Observations. Uh, Jim Cox has headed up that effort for, for many years now. Is it 10 years, approximately, mm -hmm. plus or minus? Uh, indicated this year that he no longer wanted to, uh, to take on that duty, but uh, Jim Hubner, citizen and veteran, has taken up the uh, torch and will organize the event. Uh, there will be f further announcement of that on the website, I'm sure. Uh, on June 8, 2009, is our next town council meeting. We will have, as you heard tonight, a, a public hearing at that meeting. Uh, June 15th, we have a tentative workshop uh, agenda, which will discuss the Shore Road Pathway Committee report, uh, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission's Goddard Mansion report, and we will discuss the council goals uh, status on how we're doing against the goals that we set at the beginning of the year. July 13th, 2009, is our regular town council meeting, and also on August 10th, we will have a regular town council meeting. Um, Unless there are any other comments from the council, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? All in favor of adjourning? That's not typical. Unanimous <laughs> at uh, 9.40 p.m. Thank you very much.